Hey guys, it's Lauren. I'm so happy to be doing this post um, this afternoon. It is Sunday and it's another kind of edition of Sunday in my sweat, see? Um, so today, I, I really just wanted to connect with you guys about party planning and that's what this post is gonna be about. And you can find more pictures about the party that we just had this weekend for my son. It was the second birthday party, pirate party. Um, and you can find all the pictures on our blog. It's at www.lifeinthewild.com or you can follow us on Facebook or do both. Uh, the Facebook page is also Facebook backslash life in the wild. Um, so follow us on there to see more details and more pictures about this. But what I really wanted to do was walk through kind of how to plan a party and stay on budget and stay on task and kind of the time frame of it all so that you don't spin out of control. Um, and then also wanted to walk through kind of where we got the stuff for the pirate party. Um, I had some people ask questions about, you know, my son wants to have a pirate party. What do I do? Um, Coco actually sent me a, a question last night. And so I want to hope that I answer this for you. Um, but anyway, let's get started. So first and foremost, number one, rule number one about party planning is have a plan. You've got to have a plan. So for me, like for instance, I'm going to use this party or pirate party throughout this post of just kind of talking through how we did these things. So there's lots of different ways to have a plan. First of all, you wanna know what's your theme gonna be. It may not be something as easy as Pirates or Disney or Mickey Mouse or something like that. It might be, you know, um, like a girl's luncheon and just kind of a get together. But what's the theme? Is it just gonna be like a sweet, you know, is, is it gonna be mostly flowers and white tablecloths? Is it gonna be elegant or is it gonna be eclectic? Is it gonna be anthropology-like? Um, you know, or do you wanna carry through a theme? Like, do you wanna have a theme of reconnecting? And in that way, you could put that in, in different ways throughout maybe table settings or something like that. Um, so definitely pick a theme. Um, the other thing is, once you have a theme, um, and once you kind of have a plan of what you want, you know, you've picked your dates, you've picked times that work best for you. Sometimes things, um, you know, are around a date. For instance, with this pirate party, it was my son's birthday, so it needed to be close to his birthday. Um, but for instance, my nephew has a birthday in January also. So we had to plan around. He actually planned the party the Saturday after um, my son's actual birthday. So we had to be conscious of that. We had to plan around that, that kind of thing. So definitely plan. Pick your dates. Um, you know, and, and I would say the second thing is have a backup plan. Because, you know, like for us, I didn't know that was going to happen. I thought it was going to be on the 18th, and but it wasn't. So we had to have a backup plan. Um, you know, we had to check with everyone. If you want people to be at your party, I would say call them, ask them. You know what, before I send this invite out, is the 25th okay? Does that work for you? What works best? If you find out that, you know, 10 of your closest friends or 10 of the people that have kids are going to be out of town, maybe that's not the best day. You might want to reschedule. So definitely have a plan, have a backup plan in a lot of different ways. So we talked about planning the date and the time, um, and then the time's crucial too. Because if it's for kids, you know, um, you don't want to you want to be mindful of nap times and fussy times and that kind of thing. And also, if you have a party at two, you know, then that means that you don't really have to have a full meal because they've probably already eaten by then. If you have a party at noon, you want to have full a full meal of food, a full meal of food. Um, but so you got to be mindful of that also, you know, if it's a party for adults, if you have it on a weeknight, you got to make sure that everybody's out of work. Maybe they can go home and have time to change and then maybe have your party at eight. Um, you don't want to have it at five when no one's going to be able to get there. So keep, keep that in mind also. Um, so the other part of the planning I would say is if you're going to do backdrops and you're going to stick to a theme and um, kind of the stuff that I'll show you that we did for the pirate party it was very detailed. So I would say another part of the planning is sketch it out. And I, some of my friends make fun of me of this, especially this past pirate party. I really, really wanted this, this specific cake um, for Halston's pirate party. And I wanted it like red and white stripe on the bottom and waves on the top and, you know, like the, the island on the top of the waves and all of that. And so there's really no better way to do that than to just sketch it. And if you're not a perfect drawer, it doesn't really matter. You can put kind of lines to the sides of, of what you mean, you know, like, you can draw wavy lines and say waves looking like water or something like that. Um, I will put a picture probably right here of the sketch that I did for Halston's uh, cake. And when I went there, she kind of laughed at me um, and she was like, yeah, we could do that. That sounds good. Da -da -da. So um, and, and I'll go into detail about that more later, but sketch it out. Sketch out if you're going to have a dessert table, which is really popular these days, 
what does that look like? Where, where do certain things go? I mean, you don't really know until you sketch it out how much money you're going to have to spend on that because it can get expensive. And, you know, what really are you going to eat? If you really only want to make cake pops and order a cake and have some cookies, it doesn't make sense to have an entire table of that. Um, you know, if you're big on sweets and you want to have candy and cookies and cake pops and bars and everything, and it's going to be a big sweet table, then great. You want to plan that out. Um, also, the big thing these days are backdrops. Um, we had two backdrops. I'll, I'll try to put pictures here or I'll just put them on my blog. But um, we had a backdrop on the food table, which was all kinds of food. It was chips and kind of make, it was kind of like a buffet table, chips and sandwiches and that jello and fruit and that kind of stuff. Um, so behind it was a big backdrop. Um, and then we also had a backdrop on another area that was for a photo booth. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. If you're kind of a photo booth person and you love to post things to Facebook or Instagram and your friends like that too, then have a photo booth. You know, if you're going to hashtag like, you know, like I said, um, spring luncheon, you know, reunited luncheon get together or whatever, and that's how you guys are going to follow each other's pictures, then do that. That's fun. Um, but you want to plan it out and you, the best way to do that, and this would go to number two in my party tips are, um, and as far as planning it out, making a plan, use Pinterest and use Google. Definitely. 100%. Um, party planning can be really in depth. And, and we always say this after every party. I just said, I said, God, next year, I don't think I'm going to go to all this trouble. But then when the year rolls around, you do, you do it anyway, because you want it to be cute. You want the kids to have fun. Um, you know, you want to put your best foot forward if you're going to have people over to your house or if you're going to host something. So, um, I would definitely say don't go, don't put yourself through all the effort of coming up with a brand new idea or a brand new design or something like that. Or, you know, if you, you have something in mind that you want to use, don't do all the legwork. Chances are, especially like something like a Jake in the Neverland Pirates party, people have done it before. So it's okay to use other people's designs and put something different on it and make it your own. Chances are all the people that you're inviting to this pirate party haven't been to another pirate party. So it's totally fine. Um, I went on Pinterest, I got tons of ideas and that's where I kind of stood and saying like, this is going to be a good idea. We're going to move forward with this party. I mean, it could have been Jake, it could have been Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, it could have been Caillou or something else that Halston likes, could have been like a sports party. But I, I had the ideas, it looked like there was going to be a lot that I could do with this party and he loves it and so we went ahead with it. Um, so yes, use Pinterest. You want to use it for the theme. That's the thing I was just talking about. I mean, if you are looking things up on Pinterest and Google and you don't see anything, it's probably going to be hard to find stuff that you want for that party or you're going to have to create it. So keep in mind, do you want to do that? Do you want to do all the design? Do you want to do all the footwork for that? That's your choice. Um, also, you know, ideas for once you do find a theme, you know, what do they have for their food? What do they have, like, for instance, for the pirate party that people used um, goldfish um, goldfish bread, pepperidge farm goldfish bread for the sandwiches because it's pirates and fish and stuff. And, um, you know, different, like on the hot dog, they put a sail and things like that. So those ideas, um, that's great. It's great to find on Pinterest, Google. I mean, there's great party blogs these days. I'll put some links here or, or underneath in the description, Whoops. but, um, hostess with the mostest, I mean, extravagant, crazy parties and not to say that you have to be as extravagant or, or that you even have that gene. I mean, she is unbelievable, but it's good ideas. You can find great ideas there. Um, there's, there's other blogs too. Oh gosh, I'm trying to think Tomcat studio. They do great, great parties. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so use it, use the internet, use, um, these, these blogs, Pinterest, all of that stuff. Um, it also gives you a good idea for how to save money. I mean, a lot of people are not, you know, I don't even care to say how much money I spent on this party. Um, but, you know, a lot of people don't want to do that or can't do it. Or even if they can do it, they're like, what's the point? I'm not going to go overboard and spend hundreds of dollars or whatever on this party. Some people like to do it, so it's fine. Um, but, you know, if you search on Google and on Pinterest and on these blogs, they'll say, you know, how to have a party for this amount. Or if you wanted to have this Think of this kind of snack. It's easy. You can put it in little baggies and it's cheap. That kind of thing. Um, so definitely research, research, research before you get going. The third thing I would say in having a successful party is ask your friends and family for help. I mean, I feel like sometimes we, we feel like it's our party and it's our doing and we don't need to ask people. And there's lots of different ways that people can help. Um, you know, if you want to do something that's really new and fun, ask your very creative friend what her ideas are or, you know, what parties she's planned or, or, or what she thinks. And they'll sometimes take the stress off of you. 
Um, you know, they also can help you with stuff. I mean, my, one of my very best friends who is like a party planner extraordinaire, I mean, she's amazing. She does a million of them. Um, maybe I'll put her picture right here because she is fantastic and she helps me with every single party. Um, but she has a garage that literally looks like a party rental store. So she's got cupcake holders and, um, you know, cake plates and, I don't know, glass bowls that you can put flowers or things in, vases, trays, um, and they're all different. And she spray paints in different colors to match different themes and that kind of thing. So that's the perfect friend to say, you know what, here's my sketched out idea. Here's my plan. Is there anything you have that I could borrow um, that would help me with this type thing? Um, you know, so that way they don't have to spend any money. They don't have to spend any, you know, time or anything like that. They just can, you can borrow and you don't have to spend all this money. Um, you know, other people are people who sew things like that. They probably have tons of fabric in their, in their sewing room or something like that, um, that maybe you could use. Think of things like that. Um, also if you're going to have a really nice dinner party, like a sit down dinner party, you might ask your, your family or your mother, you know, do you have any nice China? Maybe you don't have any, or do you have any nice goblets for water or wine glasses or something like that? So definitely ask your friends and family for that. Also in the last thing, and I guess they have to be a really, really good friend or family member for this, but as for their time, um, you know, for me, for instance, doing this, I had to do a lot of stuff while Halston was here. I'm a single mom. No one's here to babysit or anything. Um, so for me, you know, I asked my mom a lot of times, like, you know, while I'm planning this, can you watch him? Um, you know, my best friend again, which I thank her profusely every single time, but you know, she's here the day of, and she usually is helping me do things while I'm dealing with getting my son down for a nap or, um, getting ready. I mean, you want to leave time when you're, when you're preparing for a party to get ready, do your hair, do your makeup. You don't want to spend all this time and energy and then you didn't have time to, to do your hair or makeup or look cute for pictures or welcome your guests, you know, and look put together. So it, it's, it's good to ask for time too. I mean, you don't have to certainly, but I, I find it and we find it, I think, because we love doing this, but kind of a bonding experience. I mean, you know, the next time she does a party, she'll call and she'll be like, oh my gosh, look what I found on Etsy. This is so cool. Can you come over and help me make pom-poms? Can you? So it's kind of fun. Like get people involved. Ask, ask your friends. Ask your family for sure. It will make it a lot less stressful on you, I promise. Um, so the fourth thing is um, set up beforehand. You've planned everything. You've asked people for help. You know, you've, you've Googled, you've Pinterest, you know what you're going to do. Um, I would say when you're going to the store and you're buying stuff, first of all, the planning helps you tremendously in that because you're not just kind of saying like, well, this is pirate stuff and there's some hook hooks and, you know, there's some patches and all this. And all of a sudden you buy all this stuff. And then when you finally planned your party out, you're like, oh, I really didn't need all of that. And at party planning stores that are like warehouse stores, you a lot of times can't take things back. Um, so you, that's why you do definitely want to be planned. Another reason why you definitely want to be planned. But once you do get everything and you've shopped and you've got it all together and you know what you're going to do, definitely set it beforehand. I had a backdrop, um, behind our food table, like I was telling you guys, and I had it up in my house for probably four days. There was just a time where I did have some time to put it up. And so I kind of, you know, took my time. I think I did it over like maybe one or two days. And then we also set up the the table in front of it with the um, with the tablecloth and everything. And so as I was buying things, like for instance, the wood barrels that I wanted to kind of put um, the juice the juice boxes on top of, or the Jello on top of, or whatever, I just went ahead and put it there. So you're you're kind of you know time saving. You go, you buy something, you go put it where it needs to be. Now, some of you with kids are like, yeah, right, like I can do that. My kid will rip that up, da, da, da. and that's your choice. I thought Halston would do that, but it was a rule in our house. It was like, you do not touch it. You don't go near it type thing, and he didn't. Um, so I would definitely say do as much as you can beforehand so that you're not just crazy running. Because on the day of, sometimes you have to do things like go pick up balloons, go pick up the cake. Um, so anything that you can do beforehand, definitely do it. And again, if your friends are available and they can say, hey, I'm on my way over to help anyway, what can I pick up? Can I pick up these balloons? Can I pick up your cake? What can I do? That is a huge help also. Um, so I would say definitely, definitely set up beforehand. The very last thing on how to have a successful party and make it a little bit less stress-free is, and I, I, I touched on a little bit before, but make time for yourself. Make time to enjoy it. If you spent all this money and time and energy on a party, make sure that you've got the time to get ready and feel good about your outfit and your hair and what you look like. And you've had time to get your child ready or your husband ready or whoever else needs to be ready. Um, and that you can kind of sit back and go, oh, cool. Everything looks great. 
kids are having a great time or people are here, they're enjoying themselves. So make sure that you enjoy it. Um, and, and that's sometimes hard to do. You spent so much time and energy. It's like, I know people say who have planned weddings before for their daughters or other wedding planners. It's like, oh, so much went into that. It's like, once it gets here, it's like, good, it's done. Who really cares? You know, and you do want to care. You want to enjoy it. You want to love it. You want to look back on it and go, that was so fun, you know? And, um, so those are the top five things. So I will go over them again. So number one, have a plan and have a backup plan. Absolutely. Number two, use Pinterest, Google, and blogs. Get some ideas from there. Don't overuse your mind to try and figure out and reinvent the wheel of parties. Um, go ahead and use other people's ideas. Reinvent those ideas if you want to, but make it easier on yourself. Number three, ask friends for help. Ask them to help with their time or their or borrowing things, um, that kind of thing. Number four, set up beforehand. Very important. And number five, enjoy it. Enjoy the party. Um, so anyway, to me, those are the top five things that you need to know about having a successful party. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and talk about things that we did for this pirate party. Um, so first of all, and I will, like I said, I'll put pictures on my blog of everything. Um, but I think the biggest part of it was kind of the decorations and, and the setting things up. So what I did, I went on Pinterest and I found a lot of the food ideas on Pinterest. Um, so we had... I used um, actually a drop cloth for painting and I'll put a, a link or a picture here, but it was like a brown, really piece of paper, like a brown paper bag. And I literally taped that like nine feet of my wall. Um, no, didn't tape it. I tacked it actually. I used tacks. I didn't even have to like get crazy. Some people will use a board and keep covering it. The board's really heavy um, and you have to prop it up or you have to nail it in or I would just use something that's a little bit easier. So I use that and then what we did to create like a netting over that is we used <coughs> and again this goes with the borrowing we used some um and i forget what they're called but it's it's basically to go under a rug so that it won't move it kind of looks like a check pattern and it's like foam anyway it was brown and it's not cheap originally but my mother had tons extra of it in her garage so i borrowed that from her and we kind of ripped it up and everything and we hung it on the wall to kind of look like a net. So again, we didn't have to spend $45 on buying a bunch of nets or anything like that that we may not use again. We just used what we already had and we weren't already using. Um, and then what I did is I went to Michael's and I found these. It's great when you pick a theme that is kind of a well-known theme. I found these already painted little wooden um, pirate like accents, I guess. So they're little pieces of wood and it was like a pirate, a pirate flag, a pirate ship. Um, a parrot, uh, what else, a treasure chest, that kind of thing, and, and a lot of fish. And I kind of stuffed them in um, to make them look like those were the things that were caught in the net. It was kind of cute. And then at a party store, um, which here we have Party Boy. I don't know if you guys do. It says a warehouse. It's great. Um, but they had like a huge cutout, I would say probably about this big, maybe like four feet tall and like three feet wide of Jake and the Neverland Pirates Bucky, the pirate ship. So we kind of, I just propped that up and, you know, behind it was like the netting and the drop cloth um, and everything like that. So that was really cute um, and simple. I mean, it was carpet stopper and, you know, basically brown paper bag. Um, so, you know, we did that. Then on the tablecloth, it was the brown paper bag again to the floor, which we just kind of taped around. And then on top of that was like a map, just regular plastic tablecloth. It was really cute. Um, so we did that and then I got those little plastic gold doubloons and put them everywhere. I got those at Party City. Yeah. And those are great. So, and we, I put them a lot of places. So on that table with all the food, I put the gold doubloons. And then I, I found at Hobby Lobby these like, these buckets, one were round and then two of them were, um, square and they looked like old driftwood painted and like peeled off and that kind of thing. So that was cute. And I used them as kind of like to create hype. Um, on the round one, I put like the juices, which were roaring water um, from Capri Sun. So it was like a wave and it kind of went with the theme. And you could see them through the, the container that I chose. It was clear. And then um, next to that, I, I had the other box and I put like a Jake thing on that. Um, and then let's see what else we did. Oh, and for food we did, which I found on Pinterest, um, blue Jello cups. I just poured the Jello when I made them into like clear cups. And what you're supposed to do is cut an orange wedge and put like a pirate flag on it, which is really cute. But I ran out of time. So 
in order to enjoy the party, I just went ahead and went with just blue jello that looked like water. So I put that out there. Um, and then we did Uncrustables for the kids, which is great. If you're ever going to have a party with kids, I would say Uncrustables. You can buy a box of like 20 of them or something. And you just literally take them out of the box of the freezer for, um, I guess, like 20 minutes. And they're unfrozen. And they're perfect, uncrustable little pockets of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I mean, they're great. And then what we did is I went and bought, again, to save time. So you decide where you want to save time, save money. Um, because I could have made chicken salad for probably cheaper, but I wanted, I would rather save time. So I bought, um, which I love, H-E-B's rotisserie chicken salad. And I just made, or actually Shauna, my friend, <laughs> made sandwiches and cut them with like a cup so they were round, kind of like the Uncrustables. We originally wanted to use the goldfish bread, but that's another part of the planning. They were nowhere to be found. I went to Kroger. I went to... T, uh, TJ Maxx. I went to Target. I went to Walmart. I went to Randall's. I went to every grocery store that we have here and could not find them. And everyone was like, oh yeah, we don't carry those anymore. So do that ahead of time. Um, things like that, that you really have to kind of search for. But anyway, it worked out fine. We did chicken salad sandwiches and that. We also did hot dogs just in case people wanted a variety. And again, I was going to put a sail on top of the hot dog. So it looked like a boat. Didn't work out. Um, so I just did hot dogs. It was fine. Um, what I did do that I love that I kind of came up with was um, I used food baskets, plastic ones, kind of like you would have a hot dog in, like at a, maybe a stadium or something. And um, I actually cut like red and white polka dot and red and white striped um, tissue paper as like the liners. They were black food baskets with like the red and white liners. And so then people could choose their sandwiches or if they want a sandwich and a hot dog um, and all the other stuff. We had pirate booty. Um, for the chips basically so and then we had um, little cocktail swords that you would put an olive in or something and we put um, for a cocktail and we put uh, like a pineapple and two grapes or like a strawberry and two grapes and they could like take the fruit swords instead of just fruit salad um, anyway so in the basket you could put you know a cookie a hot dog two fruit swords and I liked that I thought that was a great idea and I'm really looking forward to using those with Halston because we do that too. We kind of put everything in and it's easier for him when he has kind of like a boat type basket than like a flat plate. It gets everywhere. Um, so those are, I got on Amazon and they are microwavable and dishwasher safe. So I got those and I know I'm going to use them again. Um, then we also had goldfish packets. Um, I put those in their goodie boxes. Um, so yeah, so that's what we had on that table. I know that sounds like a lot. We also did a photo booth, which I'll post some pictures here and on my blog where you can see the photo booth. But it was basically, I had a curtain hanging already in my house and I basically clothes pinned um, fabric to kind of look like sails, um, but different colors. And again, put the drop cloth behind it to go all the way to the floor. Um, so use that again and put some rope around um, and it looked really cute. It was a great photo booth. I think people had fun with it. I also got from Target, and I don't know if it was just good timing or what, but um, hooks, like Captain Hook hooks, pirate hats with the skull and crossbones. Um, what else did I get from there? Eye patches, that kind of thing. And we set a, a box up by the photo booth so people could use that. Swords, we got foam swords from Target, um, that kind of thing. So they could use them as props. And the kids loved them throughout the day because... They just played with them and used them and looked like pirates, and it was really fun. Um, so that's the photo booth. On the other side, and again, I'll post pictures of the real food table was like the cake table. So I used one of those driftwood boxes, again, from Hobby Lobby. Um, and, and, and a tip, and I'm sorry to say this, maybe this sounds bad, but for things like that that I may not use again, I'll bring them back. To Hobby Lobby and I don't know you guys can decide maybe that sounds bad but I'm probably not going to use them again they were very expensive um, so I return sorry if that makes me a horrible person but I don't know I think it's okay I don't know but anyway so I usually return those but I had the cake which is great and oh, I loved it so much and it was my sketch and it worked out perfect and I got it at a grocery store I got it at HEB um, which again if I wouldn't have had such a sketch I don't think they would have done it um, but they did a great job and everyone loved it and it was delicious. Um, so, and it was $45. If I would have done that at a bakery, it would have been probably close to 200. So definitely it pays to kind of pre-plan. Um, but anyway, I put the cake on that box and then on the left side of it were treasure boxes that I got off Amazon, which is 
like my number one place. I, I got most of my party planning stuff from Amazon, just so you know. Um, it's unreal. And I have the Prime membership where everything is two-day shipping. Um, so the only problem is if you don't want it. If you see it at a party store, don't buy it. Take a picture of it. Go look it up on Amazon because it's probably at least $5 cheaper depending on what it is. And you can get it quickly, especially if you're pre-planning. You don't need it quickly. You can get it. Um, so I would definitely do that. Definitely use Amazon. But I had cute little uh, treasure chests. And inside I put Rolos because they looked like um, treasure. And Hershey's Nuggets. They look like kind of gold bars. So we put that, a pack of goldfish, a pack of Jake gummies, which I probably would have never found at a store, but I got on Amazon. Um, so Jake and the Neverland Pirate gummies. And that's it. Just candy, the gummies. Oh, no. I got, I found at HEB, which maybe these are on Amazon because I didn't see them at any party store, but like a pack of, I think 10, like Jake and the Neverland te temporary tattoos. So put that in there and like a party blower and that's it. And they were cute little giveaways. They're really cute. Um, and then on the other side of the cake I did, I had from Halloween and again, reuse your stuff, a black and white skull and crossbones, like two tiered, um, cupcake holder. And so I used that and I put, instead of spending like $4 a cookie on Jake and the Neverland Pirates cookies, I just got those delicious, what are they called? Oh gosh, I'll put a link. But those cookies, it tastes like a cake almost. They're like, um, I don't know, but they're just blue frosted with sprinkles. I just got those. Um, those were like $2.99 for 10, I think. So that's great. And then, um, and then next to that, I had another Halloween skull and crossbones, like kind of three, uh, three little dishes in one. And it was, I put again, the leftover uh, Hershey's Nuggets and Rolos there. Um, so that was cute. And on for that table covering, I just covered it with burlap. And again, I put the um, doubloons. So it looked very piratey. It was cute. And those two tables were kind of across from each other in my house. Super cute. And then my dining room table, which I'll also put a picture of, you just want to kind of try and incorporate the theme, but you don't have to have a big centerpiece. So what I did is I had these like Jake and the Neverland Pirates where it's kind of like the tissue paper on the bottom and you pin it and it's got like a character. I have three candle holders in the middle of my table. So I found a burlap runner for $5 um, at in the luau section of Hobby Lobby. And I got that and I put it down and I'll probably use that a lot, maybe all the time. Um, and then I put those those cutout things with the tissue on the bottom on each candle holder and then sprinkled the gold doubloons on the runner. And it looked super cute. And it was, you know, very inexpensive to kind of incorporate that table too if people wanted to sit and eat there or whatever. Um, okay, so that's for the inside. I know this video is starting to get really long, but that's for the inside. For the outside, which is probably my favorite part, um, it was the kids kind of play area. And they almost never came inside because they loved it. So I have like an arbor in my backyard with cement under it. And what we did is we used those puzzle piece foam mats, um, just a huge one that actually my mom already had for her outdoor. And it, they're blue and they were huge, like squares. And you put them together and it covered almost the entire cement. Um, so it looked like water. It was great. And we did walk the plank. I just used two kid stools that I already had in my house and a piece of wood over. And the wood was heavy enough to where you didn't have to tie it down. I, I maybe should have, but the kids were fine. And so, you know, we put that over the blue foam board too. So they did walk the plank. They did, um, I put a huge, uh, what do you call that? It's like a silver uh, tin bucket um, out there also with a bunch of sand in it and like treasure. So I put, um, you know, like plastic beads that we had had from Mardi Gras before. And um, again, the doubloons. And I put all of Halston's kind of buckets and shovels out there. And some of them, they were like anchors and crabs and stuff like that in there too. So that was fun. And as they were playing and digging, the sand kind of got on the mat and it looked like a beach. It was like sand with the water and the walk the plank, super cute. Um, and just to kind of spice it up, I hung on the arbor a yellow net and I just kind of staple gunned it and it was hanging from there. And then on the back of the arbor, I stapled another net with this really cool, um, rugged looking uh, pirate flag that had like the skull and crossbones on it. So that when you went outside, you saw like, oh, this is the designated play area for the kids. Um, and then I put chairs all the way around so people could sit there and everyone sat there. I don't think anyone was ever really inside, um, but everyone sat there and kind of watched the kids play. It was so fun. We also had a hook ring toss that I staple gunned to another side of the arbor. 
that I just made with a foam board and some scrapbook paper. I basically just cut out circles around the hook um, hooks that I had, the plastic ones from Target. I did four of them and um, I just poked a hole through and pulled it through with fishing line and taped it and then stapled it and they were great. It was awesome. The kids ended up pulling them off because they wanted to use them even though we had a lot more. Um, but it was really cute and great and it's certainly a game area and they loved it. Halston was so into it. He just kept saying like, pirates, treasure. He was so excited. And then also I used what I, I feel is the best investment for kids, especially toddlers. I got on Amazon for Christmas for him this year, a bounce house. And it's, it's a pretty good size one, but it's not like the huge ones. So you can put it in your house. You can put it outside and it comes with stakes and stuff. Maybe I'll put the link if I can find who I got it from, but it was on Amazon. And I think it was like $165, which if you see the pictures, it's a good balance house. Like five of them were in there at a time and it just connects to like a, like a power generated like blower the whole time it's on. And it was awesome. So they went from the bounce house to the kids play area. They ate. They had cake, they had a blast. So that is our pirate party and the top five ways to have a successful party and not get burnt out or stressed out. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you liked it and you wanna see more videos like this, um, I'm actually gonna have an upcoming um, clothing swap party, which is gonna be all adult, all girls. We're gonna swap clothes and have a great time. I'm gonna do a tutorial on that and how to plan for that. Um, and I will be doing a lot more parties. So if you are interested in seeing more videos, please subscribe at the link below. There's a subscribe button there. Share this video with other people that you think might like it. Um, and, and anyone, you can go to, um, well, you can subscribe below. You can go to our Facebook page, uh, which is Facebook backslash life in the wild. Um, you can go to my blog where you'll find links to my Pinterest page, my Facebook page, my Twitter, I think. Um, right underneath my picture, it's called lifeinthewild.com. So it's www.lifeinthewild.com. And there you can kind of connect with me on social media. But I had such a fun time planning this party and had such great help and it was wonderful. And I'm, Halston had the best time, which is all that it's about. So I'm gonna be talking about things that you guys have asked to hear. Um, a lot of people from that know me from YouTube have asked to hear about like how you go through the whole divorce thing with kids. And I think I'm comfortable talking about that now. So probably gonna be talking about that too. So stay tuned and um, I will keep you guys updated. And again, if you need anything, if you need prayer, I'm happy to pray for you. If you have any questions about the party, please feel free to comment um, on my Facebook or here. Um, and if you have any other questions or any other suggestions on videos, let me know and I will try to get it up for you guys. Anyway, have a wonderful Sunday. I hope in your sweats and I will see you in the next video. Bye.